I just imported this massing and the site for our next analysis and let's see what we do in this second video. In this second video what I'll be doing is I'll be showing you how you can create a window. So if you come over to Ladybug again and visualize data, Ladybug Windrows is here. So it's basically asking a couple of information, but the most important ones are the ones that are sitting on top of these trees. So it's asking for the north first. The north is quite important in Ladybug because north is sort of a vector that is defining or aligning your project in Rhino environment to the real world in Ladybug's engine, let's say. So if I grab a point here, set one point, let's say, uh, and let's say, let's select this north point, which I already have. So what this does is basically going to tell us where we are going to locate our compound. So if I come over to Ladybug and Extra, let's see how it'll be compound. Compass is going to take our center as center, but you see it immediately takes our Y direction as north. So when you put a, let's say, 0 to 360 slider, see that our north is changing based on our motion right and it's also having the scale scale can be I don't know three for this case and this is a compass which we are going to use always to visualize where is our north exactly okay and if we preview this we group this we'll see it way better and we can use the same north value for our north in the wind rows. The data is basically the data of wind speed here and the wind direction that we can put here is our wind direction and you see what we have. We already started to see our wind rows that is created over here. But what we really don't see there is uh, due to the overlap, we need a point, right? If I grab a point like let's say another point but this time let's create another layer let's say wind push set this to my wind rows and set one point and when we put this point here you'll start to see our wind rows is created here as well. So if I go to my top view, I think it might be a bit better to see this in top view. And even we can go to render. And yes, so we see it way better. So what are these? What are these things that we see now? Direction count. Now it's 360, 36, which means we have 36 different directions. You see, we divide this. So for, for instance, if we do it only four, you see that we have this kind of uh, windrows, all right? So it's divided into four. So we can leave it as 36, as it is. Center point is the center point. So it's sure it's asking us a boolean to indicate if the windrow should display the fraction of time z time with zero wind speed, blah blah blah. So if we can put a toggle, I can show you better. So when we put this in it's basically showing me the calm hours of my window so it's basically changing to 0 0.220 show average we can connect this to the show average it's showing us the average wind speed which is 5.44 uh, meter per second frequency distance frequency hours, maximum frequency lines, statement and period. So there are a couple of things. I mean, you can check this all up, but what about like the, for instance, Legend parameters? This is kind of an important one because if we come over to the extra, we grab Legend parameters. Legend parameters is the way that we visualize the information. Usually, or in the further next steps, we'll, we'll show a couple of different methods to visualize the data, but it's a good time to show the Legend parameters. 
So it's basically asking us a minimum and a maximum value, segment count for the legend, colors, continuous, number of decimals, base plane, segment, text, blah, blah, blah. And we can connect this to here and then immediately start to see nothing has changed because the default values are already connected here. So if I want to see like, let's say five between five, two, you immediately started to see things has changed to starting from five till like, let's say 30. Then we don't see much of a change because there's no 30. It's always almost hitting 18, right? Or if we start from like zero to nine, we started to see more areas in red because now if our speed is exceeding nine, everywhere is going to be red, okay? And the segment count now is as defined, it's probably 11. So we can put 20 here and we'll see that we have the like we, we, we now have 20 different colors ranging between or starting with blue, hitting yellow in the middle and reaching red. We can leave it as 11. And if I come over to extra again, we can see LB color range, the index, this is important. So you see there are a bunch of other indexes here starting from zero to 26. So let's start with something here up to 26 and this is my color. And when I change the color, you'll see that the change, the colors are ranging. But are, do you need to have this kind of a thing here? No, if you grab a color swatch and like, let's say red, or like pink closer to red. So if you take these and merge these, you can have a um, wind speed as such by using these colors. See now it starts from zero and zero means white and then it goes to this red. So it's completely up to you again. Uh, continuous legend so if you grab a toggle here, you see either we want it to be continuous or segmented. It's again completely up to you. Uh, number of decimals, it's two. If you if you say five, we'll have five decimals right next to our units. Delete this. Larger, smaller. Uh, I mean, we can, we don't have this, we can put larger and smaller if you want to, meaning we are changing, you see, larger and smaller, we can change that too. And if you switch to the index, like let's say, if we see something related with wind, view study, shadow study, harm, benefit, energy balance, so I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe one is good, okay. Then we can switch this to there as well. Uh, again, we can have the continuous legend, vertical, horizontal, based on the legend. We can change the location of the legend, segment height, text height, segment height, sorry, height of the each segment, segment width, segment width text height, font, everything that we see here. By saying this, or by with this being said, we can now switch to the period. The period is, by the way, now is the time that we are trying to analyze the data. And it's showing now the period 1st of January till the 31st of uh, December. So if we come to analyze data, the crab and an analysis period, we can say, okay, I just only want to see what is happening in January. And January 1st to zero, to zero, till like, let's say 
January 31st and 24. Contact 24, sorry, 23. If I can, if I connect this to period now, it somehow gets smaller. Um, the size is changed. I'm not sure why we don't have a scaling data here, but it goes down. Now you see it's ranging between only in our month of January. Okay. And we can switch this to, I don't know, like, let's say, let's say three to this again. And when we do that, by the way, it starts to analyze it reverse, but can change this to three as well. So that now it's only showing the March. Okay, and everything changes. So based on what you're trying to do, it's always changing. So I can push it to, uh, I don't know, starting from one to, let me put zero, I think, yeah. It's showing the, everything as like, as an annual information. And if I right click to here and then say bake, Windrows and group, I can bake everything, meaning I can select everything as one single mesh and curves in there. So you can, by the way, take that, take them all as information here, but that is pretty much what we do here with this Windrows. So what I can do here is group these guys and see what we have, and I can figure this off. So. Uh, the color is this, so maybe I might better option. So this is what we have done. And what we can do, obviously, if I scale this, let's say with 10, not scale on this scale, this with 10, I can put it here. Meaning I can see of Windrow is working with my uh, with my if it, well, like existing context and I can put this guy here as well so that we see them all here for our analysis and if I switch this back to our thickly outlines we would have this kind of an analytical information obviously the text is or the curves are a bit like thick here which is fine, uh, but we can change that too, but it's not the scope of this tutorial. So that is pretty much it for this video. And I will see you in the next one where we'll be creating our sun pad.